Good morning. We'll try that again. Good morning. Much better that time. I know you can talk. I just need you talking to me now. If we have not met, my name is Chris Carson. I'm the pastor at Riverside. It is my privilege and my pleasure to welcome you as we gather together for worship. We have a lot going on this week, a lot going on next week. I just kind of want to walk us through that really quick. Today, after worship, we are going to have our annual meeting. Uh, It's where we just talk about kind of the state of the church. We elect officers, things of that nature. We realize that some of you who may be visiting with us may not find that all that exciting. That's why we have it at the end of the meeting. I I thought we would have it during the middle of service and just have it as the sermon. Uh, But people said, no, we want to have it at the end. So if you are a visitor or if you're a member who is not able to stay and you do not want to stay for the annual meeting, we understand. It is no big deal. I'm not supposed to say this, but I probably wouldn't stay either if I was a visitor. (laughs) However, if you want to stay, it's a great way to kind of learn some things about who we are as a church and some of the things that are happening. So know that you are welcome. We would love to have you come. If you're going to stay, the way it's going to work is this. We'll go through the order of worship. I'll do the sermon. We'll have a final song. There'll be a benediction. The band will play another song, and then Diana will play organ music. If you're going to leave, that's the cue. Once once the organ music stops, so that didn't didn't come out the way I intended. She knows what I mean. Once the organ music stops, we're locking the doors, and so then you're stuck here, and you have, no, I'm kidding. So, um... Next Sunday, there is going to be a blood drive during worship, following worship, all of those things. Um, They have been really, really successful the last few times, and and I want to thank you on behalf of the One Blood folks. It is just a great way to stand with people who need something of us that we may not even think about. I've told you about how that helped my dad and actually gave him an extra couple of months during the end of his life. We have people in the congregation who have benefited from this as well. So it is one of those things that is easy. It is one of those easy ways to stand with another, and it's an easy way to give of ourselves. So if you are able and willing to donate blood next Sunday, um, know that that is happening. The cool thing about doing it, too, with uh, with the One Blood folks is there is a benefit to you as well. Since I have moved here, I think I've gotten four shirts and a towel from One Blood, and the shirts are actually pretty cool. They're not the cheesy, normal Giving Blood shirts. Uh, They've also given me like $100 in gift cards as well. So if you are someone who needs a little bit as you are giving, the One Blood folk have got you covered. So it's a great way. This time next Sunday, you are getting uh, a T-shirt, a $20 gift card, and as we talked about last week, Mike is buying you tickets to the Orlando Magic game as well. So... Know that you are getting a whole bunch out of uh, this Sunday. We are still a couple weeks out, but we have our next upcoming concert, March 13th, 3.30 here in the sanctuary. I'm holding this up because as you are walking out, there will be a bunch of these just sitting there. If you want to take some and help us advertise, stick them up in your condos, stick them up in your neighborhoods, wherever there is a message board, feel free to take some of these. Uh, They will be out in the lobby. As we do the final song today, it's going to be a little bit different than we normally do on a Sunday morning. We're all going to sing it together. When we get there, you will notice it is one verse. Afterwards, the choir is then going to sing it in a round. If you are musical and you want to try and sing with them, feel free to do so. If you just want to stand and just let them sing and talk about ways we are tied together, that is fine too. Again, my privilege and pleasure to welcome us as we gather. Let this time be a time that is edifying to all and that furthers the kingdom. Let's worship God together.
Please join me the call to worship is Psalm 37. Please read the, what's that called? <laughs> the dark print. <laughs> Trust in the Lord. Take delight in the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. Would you please stand?
softer green. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. 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 Thou rushing wind that art so strong. come now to that time when we are able to turn again to God in prayer, this time in confession. Our prayer will lead us into the Lord's Prayer and then into a moment of silence to say anything else that needs to be said. As a people, let us pray together. Great and loving God, in you is healing for the brokenness within. Too often you are the last place we turn to restore our souls. Offer grace again and again, that wholeness might not seem so far away. In Jesus' name we pray as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take a moment now in silence to say anything else that needs to be said.
It was maybe not at an annual meeting, but at a gathering of his people 2,000 years ago where Jesus stood among them and said, the scriptures now, the time now has been fulfilled. I am standing before you and I am my father's yes for all of creation. The same words hold true for us today. Again and again and again, in love we see God saying yes. It is our call as people to hear that when everything else is screaming no. And it's our call to say yes as loud as the no is so that all people in all places might know they are forgiven, they are loved, and they are celebrated by our creator. Know that we are forgiven. Be at peace, but don't be still. Take a moment now to pass the peace to those around you. And as you're doing that, let me invite our children and our youth to come down for our time together. <clears throat> what is up, y'all all right? Everybody's good? In my hand, I'm holding something. Who can tell me what it is? A list, okay? There are lists in here, especially on the back. What else? There are charts in here too. Well done. Any other thoughts what this is? Words, paper, all of those things. Yes, ink. It's all put together and it becomes something called an annual report, right? So I know you're excited about this. I can feel the energy coming off of you right now. You almost cannot contain yourself, and you're wanting to rip it out of my hands and read it yourselves, right? No. I'm not reading that. You're not reading this. It feels like work. It feels like school, right? So the question is, why do we do it? Why do we do it? So people can be annoyed reading something. Close. Close. You got, you got part of it right. You just missed the descriptor part, right? The hope is that people aren't annoyed, but, but, I bet you, I bet you if you read through this bit by bit, you would find some things that are annoying, and that's a good thing, because what it means is you would want us doing something else, or something more, or you would want us taking something that we're doing and doing it even better or even greater, right? I mean, the beautiful thing about reading through it and being moved is you go, oh, we could do this. Ah, there, there will be pictures later. You're right, pictures are helpful. So he, here's the reason we do it. And it's not to, it's not to annoy folks, but to inform, right? And y'all as well, and so we'll have to do it in different ways because, as you've said, perhaps this is not something you're jumping at the bit to read, right? So the question becomes, how can we convey information so that we all know what everyone's doing? Because the last thing we want is people in the fold going, yeah, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know where we're going. I don't know who we are. And that's true of y'all too, right? So the reason this is put together, and there will be pictures at the meeting afterwards, um, is that so we can use all sorts of forms to make sure people are in the loop. Because it's really important to know who we are and know what we're doing. So this is one of the ways. If this way doesn't work for you, our hope is that you would tell us another way that might so that we can use your insight to convey truth to y'all. I got the picture part. I got the picture part. I got the picture part. But that's a good insight, right? And that's what, that's what we're looking for. Got it. Okay, let's pray. Y'all ready? God, we thank you for this day and this time and this group and this chance to be together. We thank you for the broader group and the things that we are doing in your name. And we thank you for the even broader group and the things that are happening in your name all throughout your world. And we ask, Lord, that we are living in ways that bring glory and honor to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all, thank you much. Let's stand together and let's sing.
Today's gospel reading is from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not <coughs> withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. If anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others that would you have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that from you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not content, condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, <coughs> shaken together, running over, will be, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the word of the Lord.
pray together. We thank you, God, for this day and for this time, for this chance to gather as your people, to spend time with each other, to spend time in prayer, to spend time in the silence of the moment, to spend time in music, to spend time in your word, to spend time in fellowship, to be reminded again and again of the ties that bind us together as one, but also to spend time in the knowledge that people throughout your world are gathering right now doing the same thing that we are doing and that together we are part of something so much greater than ourselves. And so we ask, Lord, that you would give us the assurance of community, give us the assurance of our neighbor, and let us stand strong with those who are doing the same thing we are doing now, trying to figure out ways to further your kingdom so that you are giving glory and all we encounter might be able to live fully into the life you offer. We thank you for the grace that you offer and offer so freely and the ways in which it just comes and we accept it as a given. Remind us that it is anything but. The grace is a real power, one that we are called to be good stewards of and one we are called to share with others. Let it heal the brokenness within, the brokenness outside of ourselves, the brokenness in our communities so that we might live together in unity and in peace. We ask that you be with the things that are happening in the world right now, especially over in Europe where there is threat again of war. Let us figure out ways to live together in ways that do not destroy one another, but somehow get us going in places together. In this time, what is left of it, we ask that you would speak to us. Do so in ways that remind us again and again of who we are and of whose we are. In your name we pray. <clears throat> so one of my favorite stories is not my story. And as we have talked about before, one of the things that is important to me are stories. And typically the stories I tell you are mine. And so I can say this sure enough happened this one is not one of my stories, but I wish so much that it was, and I stand before you, and I am not sure that it could be, and that is convicting to me, but you will understand more as I tell the story. The story centers around a guy named Leonard Sweet. If you do not know that name, he is the United Methodist pastor. He is a professor. He is an author. He is a speaker. He is a dean. He, at one point, was one of the leading voices in kind of the church growth movement, helping churches figure out ways to be better. I had the privilege of hearing him speak, and when he spoke, he told this story. I resonated with it immediately because he talked about being a truck guy, longing for a truck, but never having one. And I can relate to that because in my mind, I'm a truck guy. But I've never had a truck. The one time I was this close to buying a truck, I was test driving it and I got a ticket. <laughs> and I was clear God was saying, Chris, now is not the time for you to have a truck. And there was something about that that just damaged my soul because it was a pretty truck. And I, as good as I can look, I looked good in that truck. I was, I was treeing, I was loving it. And so as I'm hearing him tell this story, it is resonating with me in ways that, that are just kind of sick and cool at the same time. It wasn't even his truck. It was his friend's truck that this story is about. And he was going to visit the friend right after the friend had gotten the truck. Sweet talked about being more excited to see his friend's truck than to see his friend, right? So there's a little bit of sickness going on so he pulls up, gets to his friend's house, and of course they are going cruising. He gets in the passenger side, and as he is walking to the passenger side, he notices there's this huge scratch and this dent on this brand new truck. And he is horrified and sick for his friend. And he said, what happened? And his friend just started laughing. And he said, that's a funny story. And Sweet is like, I don't think it is. And he goes, you see the basketball goal over there? And he's pointing to his neighbor's house. And he said, the basketball goal fell on my truck. 
And Sweet is like horrified. He goes, that's terrible. What is your neighbor going to do about it? And the friend said, nothing. And he goes, what do you mean, nothing? And he goes, well, the wind blew it over, and my friend doesn't control the wind, so he doesn't think it's his fault. And Sweet says he just sat there, just incredulous for a minute. And he goes, what do you mean it's not his fault? It's his basketball goal. And, and the friend said, yeah, but he doesn't control the wind. And he goes, well, what are you going to do about it? And he goes, I've thought about it. And I've thought hard about it. And our kids play together. And our wives are friends. And there's a strong chance he will be my neighbor longer than I have this truck. And what I've decided is I'd rather be in relationship than be right. I'd rather be in relationship than be right. I want this story so bad to be mine. I love being in relationship. I'm an extrovert. I love being around people. I am a pastor. Part of the reason I'm a pastor is because I love being around people. But dadgummit, I like being right. My loved ones would tell you I like being right far too much. And I have been known to get the two out of balance far too often. I want so much for this story to be mine, or at least to potentially be mine. And there is a part of me that knows that today, there's not a chance in the world this story would be mine. Perhaps you can relate. We read today of one who, if there was ever, ever any reason in history for him to choose being right over being in relationship, it is this person. We read today of an Old Testament character, a great story, a great person, a guy named Joseph. Now, there are many Josephs in the Bible. There is Jesus' father. There is Joseph of Arimathea. This particular Joseph is the only one who was ever immortalized in a musical. I mean, there is something pretty cool about your life if you've had Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice write music and songs about you. That is pretty awesome. If you know the story, you know what I'm talking about. Joseph's daddy was a guy named Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Those 12 sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. Joseph was his 11th and his favorite son, a fact that Jacob made known to everyone, and a fact that the brothers, at least the 10 older, did not like at all. And so in a fit of jealous rage, they sold their brother into slavery, Joseph, and they concocted this elaborate story how Joseph had been killed out in the fields by a wild beast. And that is what they told their father when they came home. The family dynamics in Jacob's family, probably not the greatest. It's probably not the best family to be part of, maybe not the best family to be around, but we all have our brokenness, and that was theirs and the cross they were carrying. If you know the story or you've seen the musical, you know that slavery was a crest of highs and lows for Joseph, but mostly they were highs. Everything turned out well for him, and he ended up in Egypt as the second in command, behind only Pharaoh. His family back in Canaan did not serve so well. Famine, famine came into the Fertile Crescent, and in Canaan, people were starving, had no food, life was in peril. And so, what Jacob's family did, throwing darts at the board, anything to ensure their survival, they went to Egypt to beg. And that is how we encounter the family today as we read. And it goes like this. The family now has gathered in front of Joseph, who is second in command. 
And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father alive? So just in the context that I've told you, just in what you know of the story, imagine what is going on in Joseph's mind as his brothers are bowing before him. They do not recognize him. The last time they had seen him, they had sold him into slavery, and now he is second in command, and they are coming before him begging for their lives. I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? All of the emotions running through his mind, total disbelief, total shock, perhaps maybe even a little excitement, sure enough anger. I am Joseph. Is my father not ours? Not our father, you worthless dogs. Okay, that, that might have been my addition. <laughs> Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Imagine all of the emotions running through Joseph. Now imagine all of the emotions running through the brothers. They cannot provide for themselves. Their lives are in peril. In their minds, it gets absolutely no worse than this. And then they find that the one that they had sold into slavery is now the one who is going to determine their future. And they have to go back and tell their father that the lie that they told him was not true that this big story that the family was living under was not reality. Imagine the emotions running through their minds. To their credit, they went back and told their dad. And because they did, Jacob and the rest of the family came to Egypt. They were all reunited. Joseph, his family, his brothers, their family, Joseph and Jacob. Jacob got 17 years with Joseph and with his family that he would not have gotten otherwise. And they all lived to the fullness. This is how life works, right? I would love to tell you that it does, but you know I would be lying. But what I can tell you is true is this. If we do not have the courage to humble ourselves and have hard conversations, believing hope to be possible, then what is dead in our lives will only stay dead. Let's pray. We thank you for stories and what they say about us, what they say about who we are, and what they say about who we might be. We thank you for stories that push us to be better. And we ask for the courage and the strength to be all that we can so that others might see something in us and do the same. And together, we might live into your glory. It's in your name we pray. Let's stand together and let's sing.
I would remind you that immediately following the benediction, we'll go into the sending song and then gradually ease into our congregational meeting. As a people, let us go in peace, let us go in joy, let us go in hope, let us go, believing that grace is real and that we can be agents of it. And all God's people said. God is good all the time. Put a song of praise in the song of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. We've been walking. Everlasting